What's up everybody? I haven't uh, made a vlog in a while. Vlog. But uh, got so much going on. Um, gosh. Getting ready to close on this uh, property. It's basically a fourplex. You've seen my other vlogs. Um, getting ready to close on it on uh, freaking whatever day it is. The 12th. Thursday. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, two days. Two days. So, and then the owner hasn't give the people that are renting the main house out because it's a main house and then a triplex, basically. He hasn't given them a 30-day notice, so which, in fact, he said he would do when he knew that we had a closing date, but he never did. So, basically, when we get the property, I gotta give those people a 30-day notice and, uh, whatever it is what it is we just won't be able to get in there for 30 days but anyways it's got so much going on I've been doing a lot of uh, been listening to a lot of podcasts on um, real estate investing definitely broadened my horizons on everything with real estate investing so and you know I want to teach others you know how to do some of these things and you know just people don't have a basic knowledge of a lot of this stuff so you know I, I might focus on that on this channel on my my vlog channel maybe I'll change the name I don't know yet I don't know yet but uh, I just haven't had time to do anything really so basically it's just an excuse it's it's an excuse you make excuses or you make results but anyways so no actually looking at other properties to buy I'm actually refinancing um, one of my or my other rental property as I actually took a line of credit out to pay for a timeshare which you know timeshares are cool and this is a whole nother damn topic but Basically, we got a timeshare. Um, it's great. It really is. But then we upgraded. And I don't know why. It sounded good at the time. Um, I talked to another guy at work that actually goes through the same timeshare place. Uh, because you can go anywhere with this timeshare. Um, basically, but I had this line of credit to pay that off. I upgraded and uh, basically paid twice as much as I originally did for the timeshare, but but we get another week, but you know what? It makes, the taxes are like twice as much. Actually, more than that per year. I think before we were paying like $400 every other year. Now it's like $800 per year, so I guess we didn't take that into consideration and then, you know, all this other, we had to pay a shitload more for it, so. Um, we shouldn't have upgraded. But with that being said, you know, I took a line of credit out to pay all, pay that off. And come to find out, I've had that line of credit for a few years. And I started paying a lot to it. And I, I just realized that the line of credit is actually, like, interest only. If you pay the minimum payment, which I never do, I always pay more. But the minimum payment is like $200, and that's like interest only. So if you pay $300 a month, it's only taking $100 off. And I didn't realize this, so I'm actually refinancing, and I actually only had 10 years left on this property, um, but I'm actually gonna refinance it, put in that uh, line of credit that I'm, it's actually gonna save a ton of money, and then I can, I can liquefy my money, basically save my money, but you don't want to call it saving because savers are losers, okay? But anyways, I'm liquefying and uh, putting some money back so I can put a 20% down payment on, on another property that I can rent out and get, get at least 1% rent to value on that. So if it's a $100,000 property, get $1,000 a month. You know, after expenses and everything, you know, you're you got a positive cash flow of three, you know, three hundred dollars. I mean, that's money in your pocket. You do ten of those, you have ten rental properties like that. That's three thousand dollars a month in your pocket. Yeah, things are going to come up, and um, 
you know, you could actually, you can get property management and it's usually eight to 10, eight to 10% of the rent per month that you pay them, but they take all the calls and they, you know, they fix all the problems that may arise and you know, and they, but that's the thing, they do the lease, they find the good tenants, you know, because you can actually buy properties out of state in, in better markets than you're living in or that are around you that, you know, have projected um, in a, pro uh, shit, what's it called? I, I lost track. Um, but basically, you know, they've got a, a forecast um, appreciation. That's what it is. There's a, there's a forecast appreciation for these markets because of all the things that are going on in and around the markets. Um, but, you know, with that being said, you know, there's there's a guy at work, and he's like, yeah, um, and th this this his house is actually like two blocks away from my other rental property, which I rent. Actually, I bought, I got it for a really good deal and I rent it for $900 a month, so. It's more than 1% um, rent to value, so. Anyways, I got off point. The point is I'm refinancing that 15 year loan, which I have 10 years left, into a 30 year you might think that's crazy, but it actually, it's gonna lower the payment, and you know what? Those renters are still paying down the mortgage, and then I can liquefy that, uh, you know, the asset. I can liquefy the, um, whatever. I can, all that money, like I was gonna pay $1,000 a month to that line of credit to get it paid off, and it it was about uh, $16,000, a little bit less, but, uh, and I did the math, and you know, this is just rough. It would take me like 20 months, and that's $20,000 to pay this off, $16,000. So I'm like, you know what, I can put that in there, refinance the house, and there's still like money. There's still money, you know, I could pull money out, but you know what, it's gonna lower my payment. It's gonna lower my payment, and I'll have more cash flow. More cash flow to save so that I can, uh, you know what I mean? so I can save for you know another down payment on another property. So all in all, it's gonna be a better deal, you know. Um, yeah, you're gonna pay more interest, but you know what, those those renters are paying, paying the property off and I'm getting cash flow, and that's the main thing. I want cash flow. If I have 10 properties, and see, that's gonna have $400 cash flow per month, and actually, I think my homeowner's insurance went down. That's another story in itself, the whole ordeal with this, uh, house I'm getting that has the, it's basically a, a, a fourplex, but it's a, a main house and then a, a triplex or a threeplex. So anyways, uh, I don't know. I'm all over the place, all over the place, but uh, whatever. You get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, but that's what I want to do, you know, and there's, there's whole other ways you can wholesale real estate in which, you know, you don't have to, you find good deals and you, and you freaking get them under contract and basically you're flipping the contract to other people so basically pretty cool easy way to make some money and uh, you know whatever whatever so uh, anyways thought I'd make a quick video get ready to pick my son up so uh, I'll talk to you guys later like subscribe comment please um, I'll talk to you guys later but uh, again hit me up on Instagram at Fasting Vegan. You can hit me up on, uh, you can email me fastingvegan at gmail.com. But I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.